All right, today we're going to try and be quick so we have as much time as we can for the Bible craft. We're looking at 49 and 51. Ephesians and Colossians. So remember, these are the letters of Paul, so we know that these are named after cities. I know Simon knows the city that's, that's named, the Ephesians are named after. How does that go, Simon? Ephesus. Ephesus. Who knows the city name of the Colossians? Abel. <laughs> that's a good guess, God, you know, generally that's a lot of the answer. All right, Simon. No, it's close. Colossus. I mean, that was a good guess since that was Ephesus. So you think maybe this is Colossus, but this is actually Colossi. Colossi. Yeah, it's a little bit different, even though it's got the same ending. Ephesians, Colossians, Ephesus, and Colossi. <clears throat> now, why am I doing these ones together? Ephesus, Ephesians and Colossians are known as twin epistles. What is a twin epistle? A twin epistle is when there are similar themes taught in the two letters. So even though Paul wrote these two letters to do different cities, he wrote very similar things. He was telling them very similar things. There are other sort of like twin epistles, if you think of the pastoral epistles. We'll look at them a bit later, where they were written to, to pastors, Timothy and Titus. And Timothy, that's where you get your name from, Timothy. You know, he's one of the bishops in the Bible. But we're looking at Ephesians and Colossians. Okay? So today we're looking at the armor of God. This is particularly in the book of Ephesians. So remember, we have this picture of Paul preaching after he got saved. So these are some of the letters that he wrote after he got saved and he met the Lord Jesus Christ. And in Colossians, we'll just touch on quickly, because remember what Paul was preaching? Paul was preaching the resurrection of Jesus, that people needed to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The only don't muck around, please. Let's listen and sit quietly. Remember the three rules? Paul was preaching about the resurrection of Jesus, that he had risen from the dead and we need to believe on him to be saved. And because Jesus Christ had risen from the dead, he was God in the flesh. We, everything we need spiritually is in Jesus Christ. Why? Because look in here in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. For in him, in who? Who's him here? What do you guys think? Steffi. Jesus. That's right. Good one. I gave you a bit of a clue, didn't I? In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What does that mean? That everything that God is actually dwelt in this man, Christ Jesus. Why? Because he was God manifest in the flesh. So it wasn't just any man that died for you on the cross. It was God in heaven. Came down, took on flesh, died for you on the cross. What an amazing God we have that he would do that for us. Let's read this one together. You ready? Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. I can't hear you guys. You ready? Let's start again. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Ah, so in Jesus, God manifests in the flesh. But in Ephesians, we learn about the armor of God. This is what we're making today. Did you guys see this last night? Did mommy show you this? No. Oh, you guys didn't see it. I was saying if you were at my place. Did you see this? I come with Oh, Simon colors. So Simon's seen this one. Oh, look, Simon's nice coloring. So what is this? This represents the armor of God. Okay, and you're going to be able to take these off. So this is what we're trying to make today. So you can put his helmet on. But we're going to talk a little bit before we do this craft. We're going to talk about each piece of the armor of God. So we read here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. The Bible says, stand therefore. So that's why he's standing. Oop. Shoes came off. Oh, these ones only have magnets on them, that's why. Stand therefore, look at this, having your loins girt about with truth. So what's this talking about? Truth is the belt. You see here, see his belt? Take his belt off. Now what does a belt do? What does a belt do? If you think about what a belt does, it keeps your pants up, doesn't it? So why is this, why is, why is the belt truth? Well, it's truth because 
you know, like the Bible says, a work, um, rightly dividing the word of truth, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So why is the belt truth? Because the belt keeps your pants up. If your pants fall down, what happens? People can see your nakedness, right? <laughs> and you'll be ashamed. So spiritually, all right, let's see. Spiritually, it's similar, isn't it? Spiritually, if you don't know the truth, you're going to be ashamed. So that's why it's a girdle of truth. Keep his pants up. All right. And what's the next one? We have your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So what's the breast, breastplate of righteousness? Is this middle one. Whoops. Your breastplate. So what's a breastplate? Breastplate covers your chest. Now why... Why is righteousness like a breastplate? Well, what is it protecting when it protects your chest? Sir. Which one do you think so? The breast. The breast, but well, what's inside your breasts? These are your breasts, right? What's inside there? Try again, you can put your hand up. Yes, oh, very good, see? So behind your breast, so the breastplate goes on your breast, but what is it protecting? It protects your heart. So why is it the breastplate of righteousness? Because if you're trying to do what's right, that's going to keep your heart right with God, isn't it? If you're living in sin, your heart's not going to be right. So we need to have on our breast, breath, breath, blah, 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 breast plate of righteousness. Okay? <laughs> what's next? Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So what is that? That is your boots in the armor, isn't it? When you have your feet shod, so when you put your shoes on. So why is the gospel of peace like shoes? Well, first of all, because when you need to preach the gospel, there's some preparation that needs to take place. You need to be ready to preach the gospel. And second of all, why do you think? Did you put your hand up, Simon? Why is it shoes? Why is the gospel of peace shoes? Why do you think? Because it keeps your feet away from bruising people. Yes, maybe. That's one. That's a good idea. And what do you think, Sarah? Protect your feet. What about you, Fiona? Um, crucifixion to get your socks get wet. So your socks don't get wet. That's a good idea as well. We're talking about spirit. Alright, I'll give you the answer, guys. The reason is because we need to go into all the world and preach the gospel, don't we? So what happens when you want to go somewhere? What do you do? Peace. Well, put your hand up, Simon. Peace. Peace. You have to have peace. Put your hand up, Fiona. Put your hand up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, when you go out, you need to put your shoes on. So that's why it's the feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I'll keep going. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, why is the shield faith? Well, if you think about when you're fighting, let's say you had a sword and you had a shield. When you're fighting, you're looking at where your sword is, right? What is your shield doing? Your shield is protecting you from things you may not be looking at. You need to defend yourself when you don't know it's coming. Right? So the shield of faith, the faith is the shield because it helps you. Sometimes when you're attacked spiritually with something you don't know, faith allows you to be protected from that even though you're not looking at it. You don't necessarily know. So you may be fighting this way and the shield of faith is protecting you. Um, well, we have enough questions now, Simon. Okay. And the last one, or the second last one, we got, and take the helmet of salvation. All right. So the helmet of salvation, why is the helmet salvation because sometimes when people don't know that they're saved their mind is consumed with that you know and they're trying to figure out am i saved well having salvation protects your mind doesn't it so that you can focus on the battle and the last one what is it and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god now notice out of all the pieces of the armor of god how many of them are our weapon to attack there's only one right everything else is defensive isn't it these protect you but how do you attack with the sword right tv the sword. with the sword and what is it the sword of the spirit well, what is the sword of the spirit it's the word of god isn't it look the sword of the spirit which is the word of god because we're not fighting a physical battle so even though the armor is described like physical armor these are all spiritual armor, isn't it? Because we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting a battle. Abel, sit down, please. 
We are fighting a battle that is spiritual. It's a battle of words. That's why we need the word of God to win this battle. Okay, so that's the armor of God. That's what we're going to spend time doing today. You guys excited about making this? It looks pretty yeah, good, eh? Yeah. All right, let's go to the back yeah. and we'll make one of these. Yeah.